In this video, I'm going to talk about how I changed the regular smoke detector into this smart detector that sends the text message with Raspberry Pi. A few weeks ago, I had a pretty scary experience. On weekend, I and my wife went out for brunch, and after about 2 hours, we came back. But when I opened the door, I suddenly couldn't see anything. I wear glasses, so I initially thought it was just a fog formed on my glasses. But I soon realized it was actually smoke. The smoke was so thick that I couldn't see anything more than 1 meter away. We ran into the kitchen and realized we forgot to turn off the stove before leaving. So I immediately turned it off and opened all the windows to ventilate the air. After smoke is gone, this is how it looked like. As you can see, all the food in the pot became complete ashes, and there was still some fire left inside. The cabinet and the wall in the kitchen were covered with lots of moisture from the evaporated water. We were so lucky that fire did not spread out elsewhere. Scary thing is that the smoke detector in my home was not activated until around 10 minutes after we came back. If the fire actually spread out in the kitchen, it might have been too late. So I decided to add one more smoke detector near the kitchen. But I wanted to be smarter so that it sends the text message when it's activated with Raspberry Pi. To make the smart smoke detector, I bought this battery powered smoke alarm from Home Depot. And this is me trying to open the smoke alarm. When I opened it, there was this small PCB which stands for printed circuit board. This is the speaker, and this metal cylinder is a smoke sensor. The first thing I do when I hack any electronic device is to find the voltage source. In this case, it's this 9 volt battery. Positive side is 9 volt, of course, and the negative side is 0, or we call it ground, because it's the reference for electrical signal. I try to find other ground location that I can use. To do that, I use a multimeter, which is an essential tool for electronic hobbyists. If you are interested in electronics, but if you don't have one, I strongly suggest you get one. On the multimeter, make sure the continuity check function is selected by looking for this beep symbol. In this setting, if you sure to test lead, it'll make a beeping sound. To make things easier, I replace with a black cable with a grabber at the end. Then, I connect it to the negative side of the battery connector and try to find another ground point. This looks like it. I indicate it with a marker so that I don't forget. Next. I changed my multimeter setting to DC voltage mode because we want to measure signal activity. Make sure the black cable is still connected to the ground. And with the red test lead, measure the known voltage just to make sure our setting is correct. So I measured the positive side of the battery connector, and as you can see, it was measured at around 9.7 volt, which means this battery is still good and our setting works. Because the alarm sound was so loud, I blocked the speaker with some tape. Then, I pressed this built-in test button in smoke detector to make sure if the test button works. With the red test lead, touch the point you want to measure. See if there is any change in voltage when you press the test button. After trying a few points, I finally found it. As you can see, when the test button is pressed, the voltage changes from 0 to 9 volt, which is exactly what I wanted. By the way, if you have a oscilloscope by chance, it's a great tool to visualize exactly how the signal's waveform looks like. I am measuring the same signal with the oscilloscope here, and you can clearly see the signal jump from 0 to 9 volt when the test button is pressed. But if you don't have the scope, you can still use the multimeter because the signal is not very fast. 
then I also indicate with a marker. I'll remove the battery. And solder the wire to the ground and the activity signal. It's also good practice to fix the wire with the glue gun so that solder joint doesn't break from repetitive mechanical stress. I assemble the back. And I solder the connector at the end of the wire. Because the 9 volt signal is more than the limit of I.O. pin on Raspberry Pi, we cannot directly connect it to the Raspberry Pi. So we need the MOSFET and a register between smoke detector and Raspberry Pi for voltage isolation. So instead of directly connecting them, we can connect like this with the N-channel MOSFET. Depending on the gate source voltage, the MOSFET behaves as a switch. When the smoke detector signal is 0 volt, the MOSFET is open. So the 3.3 volt is applied to Raspberry Pi's pin 11. However, when the signal is 9 volt, the MOSFET is short. Therefore, pin 11 sees 0 volt. Luckily, I had this N-channel MOSFET at home. And I look at the datasheet and found that the absolute rating for gate to source voltage is plus minus 20 volt. And the gate to source threshold voltage is 2 to 4 volt, which is good for 9 volt signal from the smoke detector. I used 1 kilo ohm register between 3.3 .3 pin from the Raspberry Pi and the MOSFET to limit the current to be 3.3 milliamp. And according to datasheet, this power MOSFET can support up to 35 amp, so this was more than enough. This is how I connected smoke alarm with the MOSFET and Raspberry Pi. On the Raspberry Pi, I first installed Octopi as an operating system because I wanted to use the smoke detector with my 3D printer with remote control through Octoprint. But if you have a regular Raspbian OS, this should also work. If you don't know how to install Octopi or Raspbian on your Raspberry Pi, I'll put a link for the instruction below in the description section. To send a text message, I used Twilio SMS service. Once you created your account, you'll get three things you will need later in the Python scripts. Account SID, authentication token, and a new phone number. Then I downloaded Mobile XDOM, which is a tool to log in into Linux server, and installed it on my Windows PC. I used this to log in into my Raspberry Pi, which has Octopi already installed. Now, we need to install Twilio. But if you try to install it, you might get this error message saying pip3 command is not found. In that case, type sudo apt install python3-pip to install pip3, which is the package manager for Python module. And then, type sudo pip3 install Twilio in order to install Twilio module. After that, I create my own folder called MyScript. And inside that folder, I create two Python script files called sentex.py and startsmokedetector.py. The first file is for sending a text message using Twilio. And the second file is for making Raspberry Pi to start monitoring your smoke detector. In the first file, sentex.py, you just need to change the following things. Account SID, authentication token, and the phone number you got from Twilio. And you also need to type your own phone number you want to receive the text message when the smoke is detected. For the second file, you can just copy my script as long as you use the same I.O. pin number on Raspberry Pi. I will attach the script file below in the description section. Once you create these two files inside my script folder, make sure your smoke detector is connected to the Raspberry Pi. 
and inside the mobile xterm, type pi3 start smoke detector.py to start monitoring your smoke detector. So here is a demonstration of the smart alarm. The smoke alarm had a test button, so I used that to activate the alarm and see if we can send the text message. This time, I'm using actual smoke to trigger the alarm. It turns out it works really well. But actually, there is one more thing we can do to make it better. Right now, to start the monitoring program, we need to log into Raspberry Pi, and then start the Python script. However, there is a way to make the script start automatically whenever Raspberry Pi is powered on. Also, we can make the Raspberry Pi send the text message whenever the monitoring actually starts. And this will be the part 2 of the video. I hope this video was helpful for you to make your home safer. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.